Thank you for coming to our presentation of a 1776 fashion show with historic tales. We want to thank the Rehoboth Cultural Council for their support of this program. 18th century pockets were not sewn into women's gowns, as they are often sewn into garments these days. Pockets, or a single pocket, were attached to some ribbon or tape which was tied around the waist. They were reached through a hole in the side of the skirts of the dress. Pockets could be embroidered, patchwork, and even made with plain or printed material. We have some samples of embroidered ones on the table on the right side over there. We have also, so she, she has the two, um, two pockets. She will wear now the under petticoat. Um, then she wears a cap. Cap was worn by women and girls to dress their heads. It was a practical piece that allowed the head to be dressed without staggering the hair. At the same time, it protected the, the hair and everyday dust and dirt so that the hair need not to be washed as frequently. A hat was tied on top of the cap when going out. We'll talk a little bit about the hat later on. The cap could be made of linen, cotton, or even no lace. Lace and ruffles could be added also to the cap. If it was um, cold weather, she will be wearing a cloak. Oh, you have the cloak. <laughs> the cloak, um, it, was, it makes sense. It was a warm, practical garment, and it's made out of, uh, you don't have to put it on if you don't have to, because it's a lot, <laughs> of a thick, um, thick, full wool. Bridges, waistcoat, and a frock coat, which is coming up next. And that's his coat. That one is, as you see, not a line. Yeah, a few drop here, you know. Frock oh, coat. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps it nice, warm, and toasty. He also wearing um, leather shoes with a bottle. Not very comfortable, but that's what they have. <laughs> As a militia farmer, he will have some accoutrement, which is his cartridge box. In there, he will have all his um, powder. He will have um, the bayonet and his canteen. You don't need this? Oh, oh. that's it? Okay. He has um, his backpack <laughs> with a woolen blanket roll already there, already just in case he needs to spend the night somewhere. And that will be something that will tie on the front, he will tie it so it doesn't slip and stays put as he marches. He will have his canteen, canteen's, um, that's a cheese box canteen, that style, cheese box style canteen, and of course his <laughs> Thomas III was born on October the 25th of 1733. He looks pretty good, huh? Uh, <laughs> he was a wealthy man, prominent in town in both civil and military affairs. He married Elizabeth Moulton on December the 26th of 1540. I'm sorry, of 1754. In 1755, he started construction on a large hip roof colonial for his new bride. His home is still standing right on Bay Street Road. Yeah, I think the homespun was a sign of uh, defiance of the British company. Before that, most of our material did come in from different countries. And um, any of the uh, printed cottons that you see here, uh, early before the war, they would have all been imported here, you know, because it was a, a lot of work to make something that was that pretty. Your basic colors were much, how shall I say, were used by the common person, okay? Uh, things were just one color, and uh, you could make checks or stripes because on the loom, as you said, they could do that. So that was a way of making those things, and um, it was just universal at that time because, um, that was the way life was. Gentlemen, shoulder, firelocks. To the front, march.
that you have enjoyed seeing all the clothing. Uh, the people of our unit make most of their own clothing. We work from authentic patterns. Uh, we hold sewing bees during the year where we all work together and share our knowledge and our patterns and things like that. Uh, we've been together since 1992. So it's been a long time. We've had people come and go. We have, um, I guess, five people in the room here who have been together since 92. So you know we must be a pretty good group if we can last that long. Um, at this point, uh, you know, I just would like everybody to give a big hand to all our beautiful ladies and all our beautiful